Section 15 The King's Anchors, Part 2 Thoo! It is dried up! Literally, a rotted-out tree stump, said Mowgli, and motioning Kara away. He picked up the anchor, setting the white cobra free. The King's treasure needs a new warden, he said gravely. Thoo! Thou hast not done well. Run to and fro and make sport, Thoo. I am ashamed. Kill me, hissed the white cobra. There has been too much talk of killing. We will go now. I take the thorn-pointed thing, Thu, because I have fought and worsted thee. See, then, that the thing does not kill thee at last. It is death. Remember, it is death. There is enough in that thing to kill the men of all my city. Not long will thou hold it, jungle man, nor he who takes it from thee. They will kill and kill and kill for its sake. My strength is dried up, but the anchors will do my work. It is death, it is death, it is death. Mowgli crawled out through the hole in the passage again, and the last that he saw was the white cobra striking furiously with his harmless fangs at the stolid golden faces of the gods that lay on the floor, and hissing, It is death! They were glad to get to the light of day once more, and when they were back in their own jungle, and Mowgli made the anchors glitter in the morning light, he was almost as pleased as though he had found a bunch of new flowers to stick in his hair. This is brighter than Bagheera's eyes, he said delightedly as he twirled the ruby. I will show it to him. But what did Thu mean when he talked of death? I cannot say. I am sorrowful to my tale's tale that he felt not thy knife. There is always evil at cold lairs, above ground or below. But now I am hungry. Dost thou hunt with me this dawn? said Kaa. No, Bagheera must see this thing. Good hunting. Mowgli danced off, flourishing the great anchors, and stopping from time to time to admire it, till he came to that part of the jungle Bagheera chiefly used, and found him drinking after a heavy kill. Mowgli told him all his adventures from beginning to end, and Bagheera sniffed at the anchors between whiles. When Mowgli came to the white cobra's last words, the panther purred approvingly. Then the white hood spoke the thing which is? Mowgli asked quickly. I was born in the king's cages at Udipur, and it is in my stomach that I know some little of man. Very many men would kill thrice in a night for the sake of that one big red stone alone. But the stone makes it heavy to the hand. My little bright knife is better, and see, the red stone is not good to eat. Then why would they kill? Mowgli, go thou and sleep. Thou hast lived among men, and... I remember, men kill because they are not hunting, for idleness and pleasure. Wake again, Bagheera. For what use was this thorn-pointed thing made? Bagheera half opened his eyes. He was very sleepy, with a malicious twinkle. It was made by men to thrust into the head of the sons of Hathi, so that the blood should pour out. I have seen the like in the street of Udipur before our cages. That thing has tasted the blood of many such as Hathi. But why do they thrust into the heads of elephants? To teach them man's law. Having neither claws nor teeth, men make these things, and worse. Always more blood when I come near, even to the things the man-pack have made, said Mowgli disgustedly. He was getting a little tired of the weight of the anchors. If I had known this, I would not have taken it. First it was Masua's blood on the thongs, and now it's Hathi's. I will use it no more. Look! The anchor's flew sparkling and buried itself point down thirty yards away between the trees. So my hands are clean of death, said Mowgli, rubbing his palms on the fresh moist earth. The sooth said death would follow me. He is old and white and mad. White or black, death or life, I am going to sleep, little brother. I cannot hunt all night and howl all day, as do some folk. Bagheera went off to a hunting lair that he knew, about two miles off. Mowgli made an easy way for himself up a convenient tree, knotted three or four creepers together, and in less time than it takes to tell, was swinging in a hammock fifty feet above ground. Though he had no positive objection to strong daylight, Mowgli followed the custom of his friends, and used it as little as he could. When he waked among the very loud-voiced people that live in the trees, it was twilight once more, and he had been dreaming of the beautiful pebbles he had thrown away. At least I will look at that thing again, he said, and slid down a creeper to the earth. But Bagheera was before him. 
Mowgli could hear him snuffing in the half-light. "'Where is the thorn-pointed thing?' cried Mowgli. "'A man has taken it. Here is the trail. Now we shall see whether Thu spoke truth. If the pointed thing is death, that man will die. Let us follow.' "'Kill first, said Bagheera. "'An empty stomach makes a careless eye. "'Men go very slowly, and the jungle is wet enough to hold the lightest mark.' "'They killed as soon as they could. "'But it was nearly three hours before they finished their meat and drink "'and buckled down the trail. "'The jungle people know that nothing makes up for being hurried over your meals. "'Think you the pointed thing will turn in the man's hand and kill him?' Mowgli asked. "'The Thu said it was death.' "'We shall see when we find,' said Bagheera, trotting with his head low. "'It is single foot.' He meant that there was only one man, and the weight of the thing has pressed his heel far into the ground. "'Hey, this is as clear as summer lightning,' Mowgli answered, and they fell into the quick choppy trail trot, in and out through the checkers of the moonlight, following the marks of those two bare feet. "'Now he runs swiftly,' said Mowgli. "'The toes are spread apart. They went on over some wet ground.' "'Now why does he turn aside here?' "'Wait,' said Bagheera, and flung himself forward with one superb bound as far as ever he could. "'The first thing to do when a trail ceases to explain itself "'is to cast forward without leaving your own confusing footmarks on the ground.' "'Bagheera turned as he landed and faced Mowgli, crying, "'Here comes another trail to meet him. "'It is a smaller foot, this second trail, and the toes turn inward.' Then Mowgli ran up and looked. "'It is the foot of a gond hunter,' he said. "'Look, here he dragged his bow on the grass. "'That is why the first trail turned aside so quickly. "'Big foot hid from little foot.' "'That is true,' said Bagheera. "'Now, lest by crossing each other's tracks we fail the signs, "'let each take one trail. "'I am Big Foot, little brother, and thou art Little Foot, the gond.' Bagheera leaped back to the original trail, leaving Mowgli stooping above the curious narrow track of the wild little man of the woods. Now, said Bagheera, moving step by step along the chain of footprints, I, Bigfoot, turn aside here. Now I hide me behind a rock and stand still, not daring to shift my feet. Cry thy trail, little brother. Now I, little foot, come to the rock, said Mowgli, running up his trail. Now I sit down under the rock, leaning upon my right hand and resting my bow between my toes. I wait long, for the mark of my feet is deep here. I also, said Bagheera, hidden behind the rock. I wait, resting the end of the thorn-pointed thing upon a stone. It slips, for here is a scratch upon the stone. Cry thy trail, little brother. One, two twigs, and a big branch are broken here, said Mowgli in an undertone. Now, how shall I cry that? Ah, it is plain now. I, little foot, go away making noises and trampling so that big foot may hear me. He moved away from the rock pace by pace among the trees, his voice rising in the distance as he approached a little cascade. I go far away to where the noise of falling water covers my noise, and here I wait. Cry thy trail, Bagheera, big foot. The panther had been casting in every direction to see how Bigfoot's trail led away from behind the rock. Then he gave tongue. I come from behind the rock upon my knees, dragging the thorn-pointed thing. Seeing no one, I run. I, Bigfoot, run swiftly. The trail is clear. Let each follow his own. I run. Bagheera swept on along the clearly marked trail, and Mowgli followed the steps of the gond. For some time there was silence in the jungle. "'Where art thou, little foot?' cried Bagheera. Mowgli's voice answered him not fifty yards to the right. "'Um,' said the panther with a deep cough, "'the two run side by side, drawing nearer.' They raced on another half-mile, always keeping about the same distance, till Mowgli, whose head was not so close to the ground as Bagheera's, cried, "'They have met. Good hunting, look! Here stood little foot, with his knee on a rock, and yonder is big foot indeed.' Not ten yards in front of them, stretched across a pile of broken rocks, lay the body of a villager of the district, a long, small, feathered gond arrow through his back and breast. "'Was the thou so old and so mad, little brother?' said Bagheera gently. "'Here is one death at least.' "'Follow on. But where is the drinker of elephant's blood, the red-eyed thorn?' "'Little foot has it, perhaps. It is single foot again now.' 
the single trail of a light man who had been running quickly and bearing a burden on his left shoulder held on round a long low spur of dried grass where each footfall seemed to the sharp eyes of the trackers marked in hot iron neither spoke till the trail ran up to the ashes of the campfire hidden in a ravine again said bagheera checking as though he had been turned into stone the body of the little wizened gond lay with its feet in the ashes and bagheera looked inquiringly at mowgli that was done with a bamboo said the boy after one glance i have used such a thing among the buffaloes when i served in the man pack the father of cobras i am sorrowful that i made a jest of him knew the breed well as i might have known said i not that men kill for idleness indeed they killed for the sake of the red and blue stones bagheera answered remember i was in the king's cages at udipur one two three four tracks said mowgli stooping over the ashes four tracks of men with shod feet they do not go so quickly as gonds now what evil had the little woodman done to them see they talked together all five standing up before they killed him bagheera let us go back my stomach is heavy in me and yet it heaves up and down like an oriole's nest at the end of a branch it is not good hunting to leave game afoot follow said the panther those eight shod feet have not gone far no more was said for fully an hour as they worked up the broad trail of the four men with shod feet it was clear hot daylight now and bagheera said i smell smoke men are always more ready to eat than to run mowgli answered trotting in and out between the low scrub bushes of the new jungle they were exploring bagheera a little to his left made an indescribable noise in his throat here is one that has done with feeding said he a tumbled bundle of gay-coloured clothes lay under a bush and round it was some spilt flour that was done by the bamboo again said mowgli see that white dust is what men eat they have taken the kill from this one he carried their food and given him for a kill to chill the kite it is the third said bagheera i will go with new big frogs to the father of cobras and feed him fat said mowgli to himself the drinker of elephant's blood is death himself but still i do not understand follow said bagheera they had not gone half a mile further when they heard ko the crow singing the death song in the top of a tamarisk under whose shade there were men lying a half-dead fire smoked in the centre of the circle under an iron plate which held a blackened and burned cake of unleavened bread close to the fire and blazing in the sunshine lay the ruby and turquoise anchors the thing works quickly all ends here said bagheera how did these die mowgli there is no mark on any a jungle dweller gets to learn by experience as much as many doctors know of poisonous plants and berries mowgli sniffed the smoke that came up from the fire broke off a morsel of the blackened bread tasted it and spat it out again apple of death he coughed the first must have made it ready in the food for these who killed him having first killed the gond good hunting indeed the kills follow close said bagheera apple of death is what the jungle call thorn apple or datura the readiest poison in all india what now said the panther must thou and i kill each other for yonder red-eyed slayer can it speak said mowgli in a whisper did i do it wrong when i threw it away between us two it can do no wrong for we do not desire what men desire if it be left here it will assuredly continue to kill men after another as fast as nuts fall in a high wind i have no love to men but even i would not have them die six in a night what matter they are only men they killed one another and were well pleased said bagheera the first little woodman hunted well they are cubs none the less and a cub will drown himself to bite the moon's light on the water the fault was mine said mowgli who spoke as though he knew all about everything i will never again bring into the jungle strange things not though they be as beautiful as flowers this he handled the ankus gingerly goes back to the father of cobras but first we must sleep and we cannot sleep near these sleepers also we must bury him lest he run away and kill another six dig me a hole under that tree but little brother said bagheera moving off to the spot 
I tell thee it is no fault of the blood-drinker. The trouble is with the men. All one, said Mowgli. Dig the hole deep. When we wake, I will take him up and carry him back. Two nights later, as the white cobra sat mourning in the darkness of the vault, ashamed and robbed and alone, the turquoise anchors whirled through the hole in the wall and clashed on the floor of golden coins. Father of Cobra, said Mowgli, he was careful to keep the other side of the wall, get thee a young and right one of thine own people to help the guard the king's treasures, so that no man may come away alive any more. Aha! It returns, then. I said the thing was death. How comes it that thou art still alive? The old cobra mumbled, twining lovingly round the anchor's haft. By the bull that bought me, I don't know. That thing has killed six times in a night. Let him go out no more. End of section 15